In today's video, I'm going to share the 18 most reliable dividend paying stocks in Australasia. When I say reliable, what do I mean? Here are the factors that I've screened for. First, the stock must trade on Australia's ASX exchange or New Zealand's NZX. This means we're dealing with top quality companies that invest in having good governance. That gives us a total of 1,842 potential investments on the two exchanges. Second, the dividend per share must be above zero. Otherwise, what we're dealing with isn't a dividend paying stock. This knocks off over 1,300 stocks that don't pay a dividend, leaving 505 that do. Third, we want to filter for companies that haven't missed a single dividend payment in 10 years. Without a hitch, and even during the pandemic, these companies continue to pay their investors a dividend. This cuts the list in half with just 247 stocks remaining. Fourth, we'll take out any companies that haven't increased their dividend payment per share in at least six years of the previous 10. We understand, of course, that some years are better than others. As dividend investors, we want to see the company actively trying to return as much as they can to investors by increasing their payout often. Applying this filter, we get down to 126 stocks. The fifth and the final blunt dividend measure that we'll screen for is the dividend payout ratio. This is a good measure of dividend safety, representing the proportion of profits the company pays out as dividends. In other words, it's the profit share. This is a blunt tool as some companies require large reinvestment of profits to keep the business afloat. As dividend investors, we want to find cash generative businesses that habitually return profits to shareholders. So I've used a balance 33% here. That takes us down to 89 stocks. Now we'll screen for quality. The first measure is market capitalization or the value of the company. We want a mature business that has grown to be a decent size. With size comes organizational efficiencies and economies of scale which will allow the business to increase its profits over time. It's more likely that they have a loyal customer base and have continued trading through economic storms such as recessions and pandemics. I use the figure of 200 million Australian dollars here, taking our list to 82 stocks. Second is the debt to equity ratio. Companies with large debt relative to their equity often face issues when the economy slows down and are more susceptible to interest rate increases. Low debt and high cash flow businesses are generally more reliable as dividend stocks. Using a filter of two times or lower gets us down to 78 stocks. Third, we have the Stockopedia Quality Rank. This is a proprietary ranking provided by Stockopedia that uses a range of indicators to identify quality businesses on a scale from 0 to 100. It assesses a stock's franchise, including profitability, cash flow, margins, a company's risk, looking at the bankruptcy risk and volatility, and the Piotrowski F-score for financial ratios. High-ranking companies tend to have higher margins, profitability, and cash flow, all the kind of indicators that we're looking for in dividend stocks. Only looking at companies in the top 20th percentile, we get the screen down to just 32 stocks. Fourth is relative strength. This measures a stock's price change over the past five years relative to the price change of the market index. Reliable dividend stocks have strong support from their investors, and as such, would expect their stock price appreciation to either match or exceed the broader market. Screening for stocks that have outperformed the broader market, we are left with 27 stocks. And finally, we'll screen for companies based on their profitability. First is the number of instances in the past five years that a company has had a positive earnings per share. If a company survived the pandemic with positive earnings, we can be confident that they'll be a resilient dividend payer through any economic cycle. Filtering for companies that made a positive EPS in all five of the past five years, a list comes down slightly to 26 stocks. Second is the earnings per share CAGR. Dividends are paid from earnings, obviously, and if there's growing earnings on a per share basis, would expect growing dividends. It also reflects the growth of the underlying business and its profitability, which are positive signs for dividend stocks. I've applied a 5% threshold here to only identify companies that have grown their earnings by an average CAGR of 5% over the past five years. That leaves us with 21 stocks. And finally, we screen for free cash flow to sales percentages above 5%. Pat Dorsey, the director of stock analysis at Morningstar and author of The Little Book That Builds Wealth, advocates this as the key metric to finding cash cow businesses. Above 5%, he says the business is a cash machine and is a sign the business has a strong economic moat. Free cash flow is the money a company has left over 
after paying for its operating costs and capital needs. In other words, it's the cash the business makes that is free to retain or pay to shareholders. Above 5%, that means for every $100 that the company generates, over $5 of this is excess to the costs of keeping the business operating. Applying this screen, we get to the final 19 stocks that, based on our criteria, are the most reliable dividend payers in Australia and New Zealand. Do note that this doesn't mean that they are the highest yielding stocks, as I covered that in a previous video. Let's now go through all 18 stocks, one by one. First up is REA, ticket REA, with a market capitalization of $25 billion and a yield of 0.9%. REA operate real estate listing websites on Australia, Asia, and North America. In Australia, they operate several websites, including realestate.com.au, Flatmates and PropTrack. In Asia, they operate Housing.com and Property Guru. And in North America, they operate Realtor.com. As you can see here, REA has paid dividends since 2010 without fail, following an upwards trend. And if you look here, since 2014, the nominal dividend payout has increased from $62 million a year to $217 million. The business has managed to grow revenue and profitability over the past six years with a low level of debt and a good balance sheet position. With strong fundamentals, the stock price is trading at a relatively high 45 times earnings. REA is a very good quality stock. However, it does come at a price premium that pushes down its dividend yields. Second up is REIS, ticker REH, with a market capitalization of $16.8 billion and a yield of 0.96%. REIS is Australia's largest supplier of plumbing and bathroom supplies, selling nearly everything related to bathrooms from showers and toilets to taps and hot water units. It operates over 800 stores in Australia, New Zealand and the United States supplying over 300,000 SKUs and employing over 8,000 people. Here you can see the company has paid a reliable dividend since 1998, and the dividend per share has increased over time. In total, since 2014, the payout has increased from $62 million a year to $149 million. Reese is the kind of business that grows with the country's economy, as when times are good, people will be upgrading their bathrooms or building new houses. This is reflected in their increasing revenue and profits over recent years. Trading at a PE ratio of about 39 times and a stock price that has risen about 25% over the past year, Reese is a good quality business that many investors value highly, which has unfortunately pushed down its yield just as we saw with REA. A couple of well-run and cash-generative businesses that have proven themselves dependable to dividend investors. Third up is Altium, ticker ALU, with a market capitalization of $8.9 billion and a yield of 0.89%. With a pending sale for $5.9 billion US dollars to Japanese semiconductor business Renesis Electronics, this stock might not be around for much longer. Altium is a software company that caters to the printed circuit board industry. Since 2012, Altium has reliably paid dividends, with the total payment increasing every year since 2014. Software as a service, or SaaS businesses, are great dividend payers. Revenue is recurring and stable, debt is often lower due to having lower capital requirements, meaning there is a high profit margin to return to shareholders. Altria has virtually no debt, and it has an extremely high and growing profit and now trades at a PE ratio of 59 times in anticipation of the looming sale. So while they are a reliable dividend payer, unfortunately, they are about to be taken off the market. Up fourth, we have JB Hi-Fi, ticker JBH, with a market capitalization of $6.5 billion and a yield of 4.56%. JB Hi-Fi is a company many will recognize for their bright yellow stores in Australia and New Zealand, selling mainly electrical goods. They also operate the Good Guys brand in Australia after acquiring it in 2016. JB Hi-Fi has paid investors a dividend since 2004, with the dividend amount increasing nearly every year dropping slightly in 2024. Their payout has ballooned from $77 million in 2014 to $383 million today. The amount that JB Hi-Fi returns to its investors every year is 65% of its earnings. Revenue has also increased at a 7% CAGR since 2018, and profits too by a whopping 17% only slipping in 2023. Their balance sheet position could be improved though through better management of debt and short-term liabilities, 
But overall, JB Hi-Fi has proven itself worthy of being on this list as a high quality dividend stock. Fifth, we have Steadfast, ticker SDF, with a market capitalization of $6.1 billion and a yield of 4.05%. Steadfast is Australia's largest general insurance broker, with 425 brokerages in Australia and New Zealand. They also have a growing presence in Asia and in Europe. As it turns out, insurance broking and underwriting services pay, with Steadfast increasing both their interim and final dividend payments every year since 2014. This has taken their total dividend payment from $8 million to $131 million since 2014. The operating business is hugely cash generative, bringing in $400 million in cash each year. Steadfast redirect much of these funds into acquiring new business to grow their brokerage network. This is reflected in their 19% revenue CAGR and rapid expansion of net debt as the company grows through largely inorganic means. What sets the company apart is their ability to translate more revenue into more profits. This has allowed them over the past three years to increase their dividend payment by 16%. Sixth is Tech Technology One, ticker TNE, with a market capitalization of $5.9 billion and a yield of 0.93%. Technology One is another SaaS company developing and selling a broad range of enterprise business software. Since 2001, Technology One has been paying its shareholders a dividend. And like many others in this list, the payment has been increasing year after year. This has seen their total dividends paid increase from $18 million in 2014 to 56 million today. Since 2018, revenue has increased 11% a year and profits by a whopping 36% a year. This has seen their earnings per share also grow from 6 cents to 31. With low debt and very strong quality ratios, Technology One is just like Altium as a strong cash generative dividend stock. Trading at a PE ratio of 45 times, investors have valued the company very highly. Seventh, we have Premier Investments, ticker PMV, with a market capitalization of $4.6 billion and a yield of 4.25%. This company serves as an investment vehicle to acquire partial or full ownership of Premier Australian retail brands. These include Just Jeans, Peter Alexander, JJ's, Smiggle, and many others as you see here. The company has paid dividends reliably since 1997, and taking out special dividends, we can see the amount has trended upwards. As we've shown for the other companies in this list, the total payout has risen from 60 million in 2014 to 237 million last year. Revenue is growing 10.9% a year, net profit has tripled in the past five years, and the company has less debt than cash on hand at present. 71% of earnings are returned to investors through dividends, and the business has performed well in a relatively tough market. Eighth is Breville, ticker BRG, with a market capitalization of $3.9 billion and a yield of 1.16%. Breville is a company you'll see in nearly every Australian and Kiwi kitchen. They manufacture everyday kitchen appliances under their own brand or third party such as Nespresso. Their dividend history is a bit more exotic than many other companies featured in this list, having paid reliably since 2008, but dropping the payout by 35% in 2021. As you can see, Revel had a large jump in operating cash flow in 2020. However, in 2021, $60 million was diverted into a new business acquisition, and $31 million into CapEx, leaving just over $30 million for dividends. They managed to tap into a further $27 million in funding, allowing a reduced $45 million to be paid out as dividends. In 2023, the total payout remained less than the heights in 2020. Nevertheless, revenue has been climbing year over year, as have profits, which has seen a positive effect on the earnings per share. Investors should watch Breville's debt obligations as they have raised a fair bit of debt in their last couple of years to fuel their growth. It is still a very reasonable 20% of equity, however, so it isn't much of a concern at these levels. At a PE ratio of nearly 30 times, however, the stock is priced highly based on its solid fundamentals and brand equity in Australasia. Ninth is Super Retail, ticket SUL, with a market capitalization of $3 billion and a yield of 5 5.74%. This company has the highest payout ratio of any company so far, returning 87% of profits to shareholders. Super Retail may not be a known name, but you'll certainly know their Super Retail brands. These include Super Cheap Auto, Rebel, MacPack, and BCF catering to the auto, sports, outdoors, and boating retail sectors. Their brands operate in Australia, New Zealand, and in China. Having only skipped a single interim dividend payment in March 2020, 
Super retailers reliably paid dividends since 2005. The payout per share has generally grown over that time, though it has stagnated since the pandemic at heightened levels than prior. The total dividends paid out has grown from 77 million in 2014 to 174 million today. However, it has declined slightly in the past year. The company's revenue is increasing as well, as too are their profits after the pandemic. They also trade at a PE ratio of 12 and a half times, which is fair when compared to the broader market. With a strong dividend and a growing top and bottom line, Super Retail is one for dividend investors to keep an eye on. And in 10th position, we have Kodan, ticker CDA, with a market capitalization of $2 billion and a yield of 1.82%. Kodan is a technology company working on heavy-duty electronics solving communication, safety, and productivity problems. Today, their products are sold in more than 150 countries to governments, corporates, and everyday consumers looking for rugged electronic equipment. Their dividend history has had a couple rise and falls, but they have reliably paid a dividend since 2005. 2023 saw a drop in their dividend levels, which is reflected in a $10 million reduction in the total dividends paid out. This may have been caused by the $30 million contraction in net profit and revenue haircut in 2023. Indications suggest that this is likely to shake out once 2024 results are announced. Taking out 2023, revenue and profitability is on an upward its trajectory though the company is needed to take on debt to fuel this growth. Today, they have debt to equity gearing of 31%. The company trades at a PE ratio of 21, largely on the back of positive half-year results released in February, which saw the stock price increase roughly 25%. 11th is Data3, ticker DTL, with a market capitalization of $1.3 billion and a yield of 2.97%. Data3 is an IT provider that helps businesses adapt to new advances in computing to drive efficiency, reduce costs, and move to cloud-based systems. A large part of their business is bringing customers onto new Microsoft services such as Azure, Surface Hardware, and AI tool Copilot. Since 2015, Data3 has paid reliable and growing dividends to shareholders. In 2014, they paid out $8 million a year in dividends. Last year, it grew to $31 million. Underpinning the growing dividends is the growing business performance as more companies invest in better IT infrastructure. Over the past three years, sales is growing annually by 16%, earnings per share by 15%, and the dividend per share, 16%. So everything is moving in tandem. The company has a low debt profile and an extremely high return on capital and equity. The company trades at a PE ratio of 26.9, which is rather high, but it signifies the confidence that investors have in the business. 12th is Nick Scaly, ticker NCK, with a market capitalization of $1.1 billion and a yield of 4.97%. For over 60 years, Nick Scaly has been an importer and retailer of high-end household furniture. Today, it is one of Australia's largest, with stores across Australia and New Zealand. This stock features in many Australian investors' portfolios for its income, paying a whopping 5% a year, but alongside that, it has been a strong performer. Since 2009, Nick Scaly has provided dividends to its shareholders, though the payout has flatlined in the past year. In line with its operating cash flow, multiplying six times between 2014 and 2023, so too did its cash dividends. This increased from just under $10 million in 2014 to $60 million in 2023. Over the past three years, sales have grown 24% a year, earnings 35% a year, and dividends by 16% a year, which is among the highest on the market. This growth is on the back of large debt taken out from 2020 onwards, which has pushed up the debt to equity ratio up to 1.2 times. With strong margins and good quality metrics, Nick Scaly is a popular choice on this list. 13th is Objective, ticket OCL, with a market capitalization of $1.1 billion and a yield of 1.13%. Like Data3 that we covered earlier, Objective is another IT powerhouse with solutions catering to global government and finance clients. This includes the Australian Federal Government, Australia's Sovereign Wealth Fund, the Scottish Government, and Pharmac in New Zealand, among many others. Since 2002, Objective has been paying its shareholders an annual dividend. Other than a slight blip in 2022, this has trended upwards over the past decade. The total dividends paid out has grown year over year, increasing from $3 million in 2014 to $10 million today, 
roughly paying out half of their profits. The business revenue and profitability is comfortably increasing year over year and the business has a strong cash position that significantly outweighs their debt levels. Though the price of their stock has fallen in recent years, their internal quality metrics remain sound with very good margins. 14th is Accent, ticker AX1, with a market capitalization of $1.1 billion and a yield of 7.05%. This is the highest dividend yield in this list. Accent is similar to premier investments that we covered earlier, in that the name is anonymous, but their brands are widespread. Accent is big in the shoe space with over 800 stores both in Australia and New Zealand. Their brands include The Athlete's Foot, Platypus, Sketches, Vans, Doc Martens, Timberlands, Oka and Ugg, among many others. The company has paid a dividend since 2009, generally on an upwards trend. The total dividends paid out has grown over 8 times, from $10 million in 2014 to $18 million today. With a $0.14 cent dividend over the past year on a sub $2 stock price, this pushes the yield of Accent up to around 7%, which is extremely healthy. As a retail operator, Accent had a one-off profit hit in 2022 due to widespread shutdowns across Australasia. Aside from this, the financial performance has trended up. Debt, however, has snowballed after 2020, when it grew over 10 times, today pushing their debt-to-equity ratio to 1.2 times, trading at a PE ratio of 14 times with a relatively flat stock price over the past 5 years, Accent is a steady stock and a solid dividend payer. 15th is Scalarup Holdings, ticket SKL on the NZX, with a market capitalization of $700 million and a yield of 5.89%. Scalarup is the first Kiwi company on this list. EBOS was close, but it didn't make it past the cash flow to sales screening filter. Known for their red band gumboots, Scalarup has a much more diversified business in creating precision engineered products for a wide range of industries. New Zealand and Australia make up less than half of their global revenue. Since 2003, Scalarup has paid dividends, just skipping a couple payouts in 2007, 2009 and 2014. Their dividend payments have risen from $16 million in 2014 to $41 million in 2023. One interesting point here to note is that their operating cash flows for ScalarUp have barely moved in 10 years, and their cash position has always remained about the same level of $15 million or less. Overall, ScalarUp's revenue is growing about 10% a year, and its profits are rising too, about 20% a year. They also have great balance sheet metrics and profit margins, and their debt is a very manageable 25% of equity. At a PE ratio of just 13.6 times, and a steady decline in the stock price over the past couple years, ScalarUp might have something to offer some investors. 16th is Australian Ethical, ticker AEF, with a market capitalization of $490 million and a yield of 1.83%. Simply put, these guys are an ethical investment management company, offering investors a wide range of super, ETF and managed fund investment options. They have over $10 billion under management and have reliably paid a dividend since 2003. As a fund manager, their operations are pretty light and their revenue is more or less pegged to their assets under management. This is translated into growing revenue, with an increasing dividend payout over time. While revenue is growing, their profitability has seen some major downgrades in recent years pushing down the earnings per share. The company has very little debt. It still has growing free cash flow, which more than covers the dividend payouts, and trades at an exorbitant 39 times its earnings. Now we're up to the 17th stock, which is Lindsay Australia. They trade under the ticker LAU, with a market capitalization of $270 billion and a yield of 5.86%. They are a transport and logistics company, moving agricultural supplies and equipment, refrigerated goods, and fresh produce around Australia. They're also a reliable dividend payer, having paid dividends uninterrupted since 2007. Their payout has increased from $4 million in 2014 to $10 million today. Over the past three years, their revenue has grown an annual 18%, their earnings 86% and the dividend has benefited growing 48% a year. They've got a fair bit of debt on the books however, up around 150% of equity which is among the highest in this list. At a PE ratio of 7.4 times, it is currently trading at a fairly conservative price given the recent growth and positive yield. However, a heavy burden of debt and talks of recession will be scaring off a few investors as the transport industry relies heavily on the state of the economy. 
In 18th, we have Fiducian, ticker FID, with a market capitalization of $240 million and a yield of 4.77%. They are a financial advisory firm that also dabbles in a few areas of finance such as fund management and private banking. The business has a good history of reliably paying dividends since 2014 and increasing their payout, which is a good sign. Since then, the total payout has increased from $2 million to 8. Over the past three years, revenue has grown at a steady pace of 10% a year. Profitability, however, took a stumble in 2023. They have very little debt and have strong financial ratios. For a simple and cash generative company, Fiducian may be a good choice. If you like the look of the software used in this video, make sure to check out Stockopedia. They are one of the best stock screening tools I've used and you'll see them featured in many of my videos. They're offering my subscribers 10% off on their annual plans, so make sure to check them out. A whopping 88% of you guys are yet to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to subscribe down below as it supports me to make more content just like this. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.